crochet friends welcome back or welcome if you're new to my channel I'm Maggie and this is Maggie May Crochet in this video I'm going to show you how to crochet this beanie this beanie is crocheted using the Suzette stitch to make this you will only need to know how to make a slip stitch a single crochet a half double crochet and a double crochet So to make my beanie, I used a four worsted weight yarn. I used a size five millimeter or H and a size 5.5 millimeter um, size I crochet hook. I like using a larger hook when I'm using or when I'm stitching the brim because you'll find that the slip stitches can get kind of tight and um, it's a lot easier to use a little bit larger hook for this brim and then we'll switch to the smaller hook for the actual body of the hat. So you start by creating a chain of 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now I'm going to place my stitches into the back bumps of each of these chains. So we're going to be making slip stitches and you begin with the second chain from your hook. There's one and two. I'm going to turn my work over, find that second bump, and I'm going to place a slip stitch. I'll go to the next bump and another slip stitch and I'll continue this all the way to the end and I'll have nine slip stitches along my chain. This gets a little easier as you go. The first few rows is a little challenging. Your work's going to want to curl on you, but it will flatten out as your brim gets longer. Okay, so this is my ninth slip stitch. When you reach the end, you'll chain one and turn your work. Now we're going to be placing our slip stitches into the back loops of each of those stitches. Now, one trick that I have uh, come up with as I'm making my brim um, you'll find that when you get to the end, placing that last stitch can be a little difficult. It's kind of hard to uh, see it. So to make it a little easier, what I like to do is make my first slip stitch of that row. And then I place a stitch marker into that first stitch. That's just going to help make it easier to find when I come back to this to place my last stitch. So that was my first slip stitch. Now I'm going to place nine more, or eight more, for a total of nine across the beginnings of my brim here. You're just placing your stitches into this back loop only. You can kind of see how tight this is in the beginning here. Uh, that's why I like using a little bit larger hook. You could even go up one whole hook size if you want for your brim. I just went half a size. And I'm kind of wondering if I should have gone a little bit bigger this time around. It really depends on your yarn. Um, this is a four worsted weight yarn, but it uh, is pretty thick. It's on the thicker side. You'll see that um, even though your yarn can be called a worsted weight or four. Uh, some 
is definitely, or some yarn is definitely thicker than others. All right, so here's my ninth slip stitch. I'm going to chain one and turn my work again. Now working my way back, I'll place my first slip stitch and I'm going to mark this one as well. Again, you don't have to do this. Um, I've made hats without doing it, but I find it's much simpler. And if you're a beginner crocheter, I think it's going to help you out a bunch. So you're less likely to get frustrated with that end stitch. Okay, I'm coming up on that last one, and you can see if I tug my stitch marker here, I can find my last stitch pretty easily where I'm going to put my hook. Um, if you did not use a stitch marker, this stitch tends to get hidden down uh, in between all this yarn, and it can be kind of a challenge to find it, and um, I find it helps me not split my yarn so much too. Okay, so there was my ninth chain one, turning my work, placing my first slip stitch into this first stitch, and I'm going to mark it with my stitch marker. If you're an experienced crocheter and you can see your stitches easily, you certainly don't need to bother with these stitch markers, but my channel does kind of cater to beginner crocheters, so I just try to find um, little tips and things to make it a little easier to do this, these stitches. <laughs> okay, so this is it. I'm just going to continue creating this brim. It's going to make a ribbed brim um, until it's about 16 or 17 inches long. A 16 or 17 inch long uh, brim will fit about an adult medium size head. You can adjust the size of your hat and your brim according to the size hat you want to make. You can measure the person that you're making it for. Um, but I find that this brim is nice and stretchy and this is a good size hat for most adults. Okay, so I'm gonna continue making my slip stitches into the back loop it's only along this brim until it reaches about 16 or 17 inches long and I will get back with you to show you how we begin to create the body of the hat. Alrighty, so I just finished um, a row of nine back loop only slip stitches and I'll measure my brim to see how long it is. I want it to be between 16 and 17 inches and I am right at 17, so that's perfect. So now what we want to do is take our brim and join it together. So you'll line up your ends, and you'll notice that we have V's along either side here. And just like we were going into the back loop only doing our slip stitches, we're going to continue that with the back loop only here and slip stitch them together. So this would be my back loop and this would be my la back loop on the other side. So I'm just going to match up my stitches with back loop on this side, back loop on this side.
and I'm going to slip stitch. Just bringing my yarn through just like that. Now I'll go to the next one, back loop, this side back loop, and slip stitch. The next row back loop, next side over here, the back loop, pull my yarn through with a slip stitch. Back loop on this side, back loop of this side, slipping through. Okay, when I get to the end, I'll chain one. You can see how I've got my seam. Right through there. But this will be the inside, so I want to flip my work so that my seam is on the inside. I'm going to pull myself a little loop there so I don't lose it. Now what we want to do is even up our edge by crocheting a single crochet all the way around. And we want to single crochet 72 stitches. So you want to try to do that as evenly as you can. And what I like to do is fold my hat. Go ahead and bring this to the side. I'll try to make my edge here a nice seam. And then directly across, I'm going to put a stitch marker, and that's going to help me know, or mark my halfway point. And then I'll put in a stitch marker halfway through here, the center. Oops. And then I'll put another one in here to mark the center there. So I've got it in fourths. The reason I want to do this is it's going to help me um, space out my stitches a little better. So I've got 72 stitches I need to make divided by four. That means I'm going to need to get 18 stitches into each section here. If I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 is about right there. So I'm almost uh, one stitch per row here. That works nicely. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then 18. So you can see where I can kind of space mine out pretty evenly here by putting 18 stitches um, along each quarter and that'll equal about each time I come to the top of one of these rows. Okay, so I'll just remove this stitch marker here. This is my starting point. I've chained one and now I'm going to start placing a single crochet along the top edge here and that's going to give me a nice even foundation to place my rows for my hat. So I'll just keep crocheting a single crochet at the top of each of these rows. And it should come out to 18 per quarter here. Okay, so I have 72 stitches going all the way around my brim. Now I want to start placing the Suzette stitch into my single crochets across the top here. A Suzette stitch is very easy. Um, we are just going to make a single crochet and a double crochet into one of these stitches. We'll skip one. We'll place a single crochet, double crochet into the next, skip one, single crochet, double crochet, skip, single crochet, double crochet, and skip. We'll do that all the way across. All right, so we're going to begin in our first stitch with our first single crochet and a double crochet. Now again, I like to mark my first stitch so I can find it coming back when I am joining up again. So that was my double crochet. Here's my single crochet. I'll place my stitch marker here. Now we'll skip the next stitch 
and into this next stitch we're going to make our single crochet and then a double crochet into that same space. Alright, so I'll skip the next stitch, go into the following stitch with my single crochet and a double crochet. Now, if these stitches are new to you or you're a newer crocheter, I will put a link above here uh, for some tutorials on how to do a single crochet and a double crochet um, a little slower. I'll briefly tell you now, you're just gonna put your hook in, draw your yarn through like this. For your double crochet, you yarn over, place your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. We're gonna skip this next stitch. Into this stitch, we're going to place our single crochet by placing your yarn into that stitch. Yarn over, pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Pull your yarn through both loops on your hook. Now your double crochet goes into the same space. You're gonna yarn over. Place your hook into that space, yarn over, pull through, you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, two loops are on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two. Skip this next stitch, go into the following stitch with your single crochet, and then your double crochet. Skip the next stitch into the following stitch, single crochet, and double crochet into that same space. Okay, so you can see the pattern starting here. I will meet you when I come back to our stitch marker. Alrighty, so I'm coming up to my stitch marker and placing my last Suzette stitch. This is considered round two that we're completing. Round one was the single crochet round. This first row or round of Suzette stitches is considered round two. So I'm going to join this round by placing a slip stitch into our very first stitch. Okay, so I've slip stitched it together. I'm going to turn my work and chain one. Now into the same space that we just joined, I'm gonna place my first Suzette stitch. It's a little tight, this first one, but just wiggle your hook into there, you'll be okay. <laughs> so I'm placing my single, then double. It's a little squeaky and tight, but You'll be all right. And I always mark my first stitch of my round. That was the single crochet here. Now we're gonna skip this double crochet and into the single crochet stitch that we made. We're gonna do another Suzette stitch. Single crochet, double crochet. Okay, we're skipping this double crochet and into the single crochet, we're placing our Suzette stitch, single and a double. Skipping the double crochet and into the single crochet, we're placing our Suzette stitch. So in this round, we're skipping our double crochets and placing our stitches into the single crochet space below. Double, single. Okay, 
double, single. You can tell the difference because the double is just a little bit longer and you'll see this little short piece here. The double crochet and then the short piece is a single, double, short piece is single. So we're placing our stitches here into this short piece. Now we're going to continue this for 14 rounds. I like to keep a little pad of paper next to me and just keep track of my rounds. So we finished round two. Remember round one was our row of single crochets and we're working on round three. Once I come around and join, then I'll cross off three and I'll keep that going so that I can keep a good record of how many rounds I finished. Okay, so I'm coming up to my stitch marker. You can see my last double crochet space here. I'm going to join into this stitch by placing a slip stitch. Chaining one and turning my work. Now I don't want to forget to mark off that I just completed round three. Now you can place your stitches by looking for the space between the double crochets or you can turn your work over and follow your V's, whichever you find works best for you. Your first stitch is going to go right into this space that we joined. So we'll make our first single crochet and double crochet right into our slip stitch join space. Whoop. Skipping our double crochet and going into this single crochet space next. So I'm just going to keep this up until I get to my 14th round and I will show you how we're going to start bringing our hat together at the top here, okay? So I will meet you back after round 14. Okay, I'm coming up on my last stitch of round 14. And I'll join this round with a slip stitch and chain one. Now we're going to be creating our crown of the hat. The hat is going to start coming in and round to the top. So what we're going to need to do are some decreases. We're going to change our stitch. We're going to be doing half double crochets and we'll be doing some half double crochets two together to make our decrease. And I'll show you how we'll get that going. Okay, so for round 15, we're going to be placing half double crochets and half double crochets two together. And a half double crochet is done by yarning over, placing your hook into the stitch, bringing your hook through, three loops on your hook, yarn over and bring your hook through all three of those loops. Okay, again, yarn over into the next stitch, three loops on your hook, pull your yarn through all three. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to do a half double crochet two together. To do that, you do your half double crochet into the next stitch, pulling your yarn through the first two loops only, not all the way through. We're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch, pull through. Now we have four loops on our hook. Now we're going to pull our yarn through all four of those loops. 
and now we'll just repeat that all the way around. So we'll place six half double crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we're going to do a half double crochet two together. Again, that's yarning over going into the next stitch. You're going to bring your yarn through the first two loops only, yarn over, go into the next stitch, now you have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. Okay, so we're going to do six half double crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then, oops, got some extra yarn there. Here's my sixth. And then we're going to do a half double crochet, two together, yarn over, start your half double crochet, but only go through the first two loops, do a half double crochet all the way through all four. Okay, so we're just going to continue this all the way around until we get to our stitch marker and that's going to complete round 15. So I am finishing up round 15 and I'll end on a half double crochet two together. And I'm going to join this round with a slip stitch. chain one. Okay, so for, and I've got my little note pad over here, I went ahead and just wrote everything out, but you'll see the pattern is that for round 16, we're going to do half double crochets in the next five stitches, and then we're going to do two together. Round 17 will be half double crochet in four stitches, two, then a two together then 18 is 3 and so forth down here. I'll make sure that I um, type this all in down in the description box for you. Um, but it's just decreasing each round to bring your hat in together like this. So we are on round 16 and again <laughs> this will save your life if you just have a little bit of scratch paper on the side and write yourself some notes so that you can keep track of your rounds. All right. So I'm finishing up here and you've probably guessed what our last round will be. It is just going to be half double crochets, two together. All the way around. So we're going to just do our decrease round here. Every stitch will be a half double crochet decrease. All right, so that was our first stitch. Marking it here. Another half double crochet decrease. And another decrease. Every stitch in this round is a decrease. We are on our very last round now. Okay, we're going to join this round and then we're going to end our work. Okay, you end your work by making a chain there, you slip stitch together, chain one, and now we're going to cut off and give ourselves a pretty good tail because we're going to use this tail to gather up our very last bit here and kind of close this hole. Okay, so I'll just pull my yarn through. Okay, 
Next you're going to need a darning needle. Now I like to do my uh, closing from the inside, so I'm going to turn the hat inside out. Bring my yarn through. And what we're going to do here is uh, cinch it closed. So the way I do this is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to bring it around whoop, under each of the loops here. I'm just kind of doing a little whip stitch around each of these loops that are showing through. Just all the way around. You can do this kind of loosely because in the end we're going to pull it through to cinch it up. Okay, I'll do one more. It can't hurt to go around if you didn't, if you lost your beginning spot. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to pull my yarn to cinch it together, and it brings my circle in nice and tight. Now I'm just going to feed my yarn through and kind of weave it in, so I'm weaving in my end. And you just kind of find little stitches here and there to bring your end through. Always making sure that you're not letting your needle go through to the other side because if it does, you'll see your uh, yarn coming through your work on the other side. Just zigzag all around so that you're sure your tail will not come loose and your work won't come loose and your stitches don't in the wash. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Cut my tail. Now, you'll weave in this end and you can either make a pom-pom um, out of your yarn or I like to use uh, the fuzzy balls these are really cool. They come with a snap, so you can snap them off and on so that you can remove the fuzzy ball uh, to wash the hat. I will um, put a link in the description box below to these. I found them on Amazon. Uh, just know that when they come in uh, the mail, they're going to be kind of, they're not going to look as fluffy as this. They're going to be um, kind of flat. So to fluff them up and get them really poofy, um, just take a hair dryer and um, blow it over your ball and you'd be surprised how much fluffier they get. So that's that guys. This is the beanie using the Suzette stitch. Now one other thing I wanted to point out was um, you might have noticed that I did not switch back to the five millimeter hook for the purple hat. Um, I found that the yarn that I used for the purple hat was a little different than the yarn I used on this first hat here. Um, this yarn was Karen Simply Soft. And even though it is a four weight worsted weight yarn, um, you can see that the yarn uh, was a little thinner than this hat. So I went with the larger hook. Uh, for ease of work and you're going to notice just by switching the hook size the difference in the hat size so that's another way that you can um, 
adjust your hat size. You can use a um, larger hook. You can use a thicker yarn. This yarn is the big twist yarn from um, Joann's that I used. So your hats can vary in size, but know that they're very stretchy um, and they'll fit a variety of different heads. Uh, it just so happens that this black hat I made for someone who is rather petite, so it's perfect that it came out a little smaller. Bumping up my uh, hook size by half a size and using a thicker yarn gave me a larger hat. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please um, leave them uh, below for me and I will get back with you. And I appreciate that you've spent this time with me today. If you um, have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified the next time I post a video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.